Salams, you're watching News Click. We're in Manipur, uh, a state that is uh, has finished 50 years of statehood in 2022. For those of us who missed the past couple of years because of the pandemic, uh, it has been 50 years. We're uh, just a few days away from the beginning of polling for the 12th assembly elections for the state. A brief run through of the state's history from 1947 to 49. Manipur was an independent state after which it merged with the Union of India. Uh, in 1963, it was declared a union territory and in 1972, full statehood was uh, achieved by Manipur. Uh, leading our uh, leading news takes coverage of this uh, round of elections in Manipur is uh, journalist Grace Jajo, who is with me today, uh, to run us through basically what some of the key issues are. Uh, like a friend was telling me last night, the politics of the state are quite simple, uh, but the complexities are still many. Grace, I, <laughs> yeah. you might start with disagreeing with that statement. No, no, <laughs> I, I completely agree with that. So, because uh, unless you understand this, uh, this dynamics within, uh, it's, it would be extremely, if you want to simplify it into a very homogeneous kind of character, then it might, we might miss on what exactly has, is happening. So therefore, it is important that we understand these dynamics. You please, you show how these dynamics are playing out in the election. And there is where uh, we are, you are able to see all the, all the, you know, power tussle, the real power tussle. So just, just to do a quick demographic breakup, very broadly speaking and very numbers based, uh, the state has a population of approximately 30 million, uh, of which the gender ratio is about 50-50, uh, men slightly outnumbering women. Um, interestingly, yes. Interestingly, yes. Uh, there are 60 assembly seats, of which 20 are in the hill areas, 40 are in the Imphal Valley. Uh, this kind of goes against the geographical distribution of the state where 91% of the area of the state uh, is a uh, hill area, uh, largely where the state's tribal population lives, which numbers approximately 48% of the overall population. Uh, some, these, some of these numbers, uh, Grace, and you can add to them, please, of course, if you want to. Yes, we are. Like, the tribals are about 42%. 42%. The hill uh, areas also include a population of non-tribal, mm. uh, like uh, in the Char Hazare area, which is in Kangpopi constituency, and also in uh, some other areas like the Moray mm. and the Jiribam area. Mm. So, other than that, I think it's exclusively tribal areas. Mm. The domiciles are exclusively tribal. Mm. Uh, what is interesting is like. Uh, how we became like a permanent minority in the assembly and uh, a lot of uh, tribal leaders says this is because the last delimitation exercise was manipulated because if we bring in the criteria of the <coughs> geography if we bring in the criteria of our backwardness then despite the population being slightly higher on the non-tribal the tribal would have would have had 30 out of the 60 seat yeah. and it would have been 50 50 but um, the reality today is that like we are 20 hmm. and um, 20 and but interestingly um, Manipur has a very significant character which is on which is a constitutional safeguard for the tribals despite being just uh, 20 out of 60. 60 it's a constitutional safeguard it's under article 371c hmm. uh, that safeguard allows us to have our voice uh, inside the assembly mm -hmm. without being defeated by the number game. Right. So uh, so we have this subcommittee inside the assembly, which is called the Hill Area Committee. Mm -hmm. And the voice of the Hill Area Committee, which represents the Hill Area's concerns and their interests, mm -hmm. cannot be defeated by the House. So so that that is our only constitutional safeguard. So that has... Otherwise, we are a state with 42% tribals who doesn't even have a Sikh schedule in place. Sikh schedule has always been debated inside the assembly. Mm. The non-tribals have always said that uh, we will agree to the Sikh schedule because you are eligible for that, constitutionally eligible for that. But with local 
adjustment. And mm. these three words has been extremely problematic, has never been specified or laid out. So we don't know, it has never been defined. So every time it's debated, uh, you know, it ends with the same conclusion saying with local adjustment. Mm. And so that local adjustment has never happened till mm. date. So mm. in a way, it means that we are denied sick schedule. Right. But we on we ha uh, have this Hill Area Committee uh, created under 371C, which uh, which is our only safeguard. So that's the reason why this time the hill population is coming across our 34, uh, it, I'm just saying, what, 34, across our 34 ethnic tribes to collectively voice for a proper implementation of this 371C. Mm. Yeah, and, and this historical context is important uh, because it, it kind of, like you said, it, it puts into perspective the duality that exists uh, in every aspect of uh, Manipuri society or society in Manipur rather. Mm. Uh, but coming to the electoral aspects of this particular upcoming election uh -huh. for which polling is, uh, the first round of polling is to be mm -hmm. held on the 28th of mm -hmm. Feb, yeah. uh, just in a few days from mm -hmm. now. Uh, firstly, who are the key players and how are we going to be looking at uh, what they are doing on the electoral front, whether it's from the perspective of their manifestos or what they have stated in their agenda or or their record as uh, because many of them are, have already held office uh, congress has never been a minority in the last election they were 28 hmm. bjp was just 21 just behind them so there was congress was very much a majority then so uh, we don't know how it will play out this time because uh, there's been a lot of uh, hopping um, among the parties, not only for Congress, but also for everyone. So yeah. we don't know how it will play out in terms of gathering the votes. Uh, that is one, that is at the political level. Yeah. And, we, like, and the popularity of the political parties varies from uh, which community you belong to, whether you like it or not. Here, yeah. it's not so much about class. Mm. It's more about your ethnic city. So, for instance, like if you are a tribal, because among the tribals, like 97 of the tribal communities are um, Christians. Mm. So, we are slightly skeptic about the BJP government. And also because BJP government keeps saying this thing that, you know, no matter what BJP has done elsewhere in India, we are, you know, we have never said no to your, you know, your, your Christian um, way belief. of life yeah. not only a belief but also your way, way of life, life. Yeah, yeah. and your worship patterns yeah. and stuff yeah. but what was extremely disturbing was that was what they used to say mm. and that's how like a lot of bjp kind of mushroomed in the hills in terms of loyalties in terms of units in terms of people mm. signing up for the party mm. then suddenly there was this church eviction notice given to nine churches mm. and uh, what was very interesting was that eviction notice uh, kind of was clubbed with some other uh, this thing, uh, listed items, mm. which were also uh, supposedly illegal. Mm. But the rest were all regularized mm. and the churches were uh, this thing, uh, marked out and eviction notice was given to nine churches. Now, this became extremely problematic and it's became, it became extremely like, you know, problematic to the Christian community. Mm. And um, so that might reflect in the, in the, uh, this thing, voting pattern right. in the hill areas. Yeah. Uh, because th th that's our, this thing. Mm. The second thing which was, which kind of increased this anxiety and concern was that when the voting date was uh, declared, the, in the initial notification, when it includes Sunday, mm. and includes Sunday, and then but there was protests all over. There was like church groups, civil society groups, tribes groups. Everyone came out, but the government didn't say a word. They didn't even comment. They didn't mm. even say they would look into it. Mm. It was only when all tribal student union Manipur gave them a deadline. You know, <laughs> I think that was the tenth of Feb that they gave saying mm. like this is not what we will tolerate mm. so it was only when the atsum came with that kind of a language with that kind of a tone and with that kind of a deadline that mm. they ultimately uh, this thing uh, changed the dates now it's not a sunday anymore mm. but uh, but what we are seeing is that you know do we have to assert our rights all the time mm. shouldn't the government be sensitive about who they are ruling yeah. you know 
aren't we in a secular state? Why is it that, you know, the pop this 97 population of the tribal's interest is not taken into consideration on mm. for such an important, mm. uh, no, this thing, date, right? Mm. So all those things are now playing out mm. and it's reaffirming our, like, Concerns. Skepticism. Uh, yeah, our yeah. concerns, the earlier concerns related to the eviction. Mm. So that is BJP. BJP was almost like a mm, forgotten party in the state. Mm. Uh, and then suddenly they pop up with a few numbers. Mm. Then uh, uh, in the last, mm, in the last, uh, this thing, election, election. Mm. they knew that because of uh, the position in the center, center. they mm. might be able to gain out of it. So some, you know, very smart people, I would say, came to the party, uh, became kings of the party and um, started chanting the party ideologies. And, um, but they are, not the, uh, they are not the ones who have been chanting the same thing for years. They were the ones who were chanting so many things before they were yeah. chanting this. Yeah. So it's, it's a typical uh, you know, politics that people criticize. Mm. But, but that, having said that, uh, it was not smooth from day one. When they got 21, uh, they, uh, they, they co-opted everyone. There were like scenes where they used a lot of force even at the airport to co-opt people to, to reach that magic number. Yeah. So they formed, okay, they, they manipulated and they formed. Uh, let's be agreeable to them that they manipulated and they formed the government. Yes. And midway, in the, in the midst of pandemic, uh, the NPP went and camped physically with the Congress and, say, and they gave a press conference saying they will never come back under any circumstances. But of course, the uh, you know, <laughs> boss came into town. <laughs> there was like series and series of conversations. Yeah. And afterwards, the, the end, in the end, they would push back to the party. Mm. Now, now uh, so the, within the BJP, uh, Within the BJP-led government, there has never been a smooth ride. Right. Uh, one, maybe it's the power tussle, but much more than that, it's also the, uh, what, interestingly, it's also the overlapping of their ideologies. For instance, they have NPF. Yeah. NPF, who is all for Naga integration. Mm. Then they have BJP, who is like, takes the majority position and say, we are all for Manipur integrity. Mm. Because Manipur integrity is chanted by 40, 40 constituencies, right? right? So they, they chant the majority chant this thing. Every power, this thing, party in power, majority of course, party. like uh, yeah. they chant this. Yeah. So they, they say that we are from Manipur integrity, but yeah. they have people like NPF who is very clear that they want Naga integration. Mm. So so it's very interesting how they play out because uh, by, ha by um, co-opting this thing, um, the NPF in the party, they were able to at least um, minimize the buns and blockades on the highway, hmm. National Highway hmm. A1, which hmm. was previously known as NH39. NH yeah. hmm. So that, that's apparent to the public. Right. But, uh, but, but <laughs> what was very disappointing at the ground was that the NPF were called failures in their own constituencies because hmm. they had not pushed anything that they were supposed to push. Perhaps because they are just four hmm. against the other, and they were, they didn't, they didn't gain anything by moving out of that because anyway, they could not align with the Congress. Right. So it was like, so they were try also trying to maximize their opportunity by being with the BJP led government. Mm. But they completely fail on the manifestos that they gave to the people. Mm. So the voting this time might reflect whether the people were disappointed for not, um, for not delivering the promises which we were anticipating from NPF mm. because they became part of the government. And, and so uh, on various things, like for example, uh, they were against the Congress on district creation on the eve of election in 2016 December, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the districts were creation, created and the Nagas were uh, outrightly furious and they say this is the Congress which has done this so you know like Congress is against the interests of the Nagas but NPF happily brought the cabinet meeting to the new created districts you know mm -hmm. so the, if the NPF is bringing cabinet meetings to the new created yeah. districts, districts you know so which means they've already accepted it and they have not made any noise about yeah. it uh, they're comfortable with it so mm. 
in fact they are actually demanding more funds and you know more upgradation of this new this recreation right. so so it's uh, the opposite of an agitation yeah act. yeah so what they won by pushing out to congress saying they are anti naga yeah. when they came in hmm. they they kind of uh, were uh, they kind of pushed the congress yeah. agenda to yeah. survive okay yeah. so this time i don't know what kind of cards they will play hmm. to win the, uh, the voters because in the first in the first launching npf played a very interesting card on the eve of that um, the general secretary of the nsn i am mr thinglang muga was brutally stopped in mau gate mm. from entering uh, and visiting his hometown mm. now that has completely hurt the sentiment of the nagas mm. and uh, two young protesters uh, were also shot dead by the manipur commando then mm. so uh it was a very ugly uh this thing incident Absolutely. which completely sharpens the divide between the hills and the valley especially between the nagas and the uh, valley, valley. Mm. so with that background in 2012 they were able to garnish the pro naga sentiments mm. so um, they won in the launching they won in four constituencies um and people were happy that they represent the naga position because mm. people feel that whether it's the congress or whether it's the bjp they are dictated by the center Same but way. this particular party is naga centric they will work for the nagas yeah. nothing much happened and um, so, so, but so so that's that's the and, kind and of the other party that kind of uh, has been contesting elections in manipur for a while but this time because of the party hopping that we were talking about has perhaps benefited uh, the most from this these changes is the jdu yes 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 very interestingly yes no one would have anticipated yeah. this so jdu uh, i'm sure is like uh, very remote i mean in terms of popularity yeah. just a month back mm. okay so um, i would never have imagined this today mm. uh, the way it's playing out today i mean you hear like it in the countdown time we have seen how vibrant they are now yeah. so but you not have anticipated this but um i think bjp has a lot of like polarity even within hmm. so uh, it's apparent even to the public now hmm. which initially must have been within their confines but it has spilled over to the public now that hmm. they have like they like you know uh, two camps within hmm. so um, and owing to that i think they, they don't have a consensus even in announcing their 16 aims hmm. so so that plays out because if they have a consensus then they would not have been this drama you yeah. know after that so in, on the day itself on the next day in the following days like there was such a rush everywhere to all the political parties yeah. by then the congress has already announced like you know their first list mm. and maybe they were not able to absorb everyone yeah, yeah and because they have their own like mm. candidates mm. you know and so uh, so so i heard that some candidates were actually like looking out for options also not only running to jdu yeah. but also you know going one after another mm. you know so so we had a lot of things like um, off record but i think that i think was happening in a very panicky mode yeah. so jdu absorb like a lot of extremes you mm. know mm. so a lot of extremes like who otherwise would not have seen as coming together mm. so um, for instance like um, we have a very vibrant young uh, uh, lady contestant like brinda mm. coming to jdu mm. uh, which i'm sure is a backup plan because if she was interested in jdu mm. she would have been the forefront you know the poster girl for yeah. a poster woman for yeah. them poster yeah. candidate for them right mm. but uh, i'm sure there was a backup plan i'm mm. sure like uh, she was hoping till the last moment because it was only after the confirmation of and the announcement of the uh, candidates that she joined the jdu right. likewise with the other candidates as well right. but if you look at the combination within the jdu came now mm. it's it's so amazing as to how they are going to negotiate among themselves mm. and compromise their ideological uh, you know positions individual ideological positions and their um and to come together and work out a common minimum program even among themselves yeah. you know so that's one and this time they are the most ambitious because from four they are thinking that they they've even 
put on like you know uh, record in some of the press conferences and in some of the public meetings that they are going to get the majority so absolute majority and and I think some of their candidates have actually said this. Mm. So it's like, it's from four to absolute majority would be like, you know, that's, that's like extremely ambitious for me to see. Because I don't see their popularity growing in isolation yeah. as a party. Yeah. I don't see anything which is so distinct and unique and important about them which can attract voters in the hills hmm. uh, or in the valley. Hmm. Um, uh, Grace, uh, another key issue is the ADC bill. Uh, oh. Can you summarize for us please what the debate and the status is there? Uh, the tribals were never united. Hmm. Uh, after the bitter clash of the cookies and nagas in the early 90s, which spilled over to the mid 90s, uh, for two and a half decades we have always been uh, separated by this history. So, the, in fact, the only platform where tribals comes together is this all tribal student union Manipur. Other than that, we don't have a common platform for the tribals here in the state. But this time, interestingly, this new ADC bill uh, is something which all the tribals across our 34 tribes, you know, are embracing it as our future, right. you know, as the, our future. Because we've been deprived of sick schedule, we've been deprived of delimitation exercise. Whenever there's a delimitation exercise that's supposed to happen, all the non-tribals hmm. across political parties would come together, come to go to Delhi hmm. and say, we don't want this. Hmm. It's sensitive, you know, like law and order situation, whatever that is. So. The tribal's interest has always been suppressed by this collectiveness. So if it's like tribal, then the, the non-tribals doesn't have any problem coming together across the extreme, you know. Of the spectrum. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay, so, so that being the reason. And for us, we have never come together. Mm. This is the first time that we are coming together. Now, the ADC bill is very interesting because in, 2000, in 2018, uh, 25 departments were already... Uh, this thing given to the ADCs. Hmm. We have six ADCs as of, as of now. Right. So 25 departments have already been, uh, uh, there has been devolution of power hmm. of 25 departments. But it was just, uh, and nobody has issues with that. Nobody has issues that 25 departments has been given to the ADCs. Right. Because there was no budget involved, mm. and they thought like, unless there is no budget involved, let them like you know imagine that there is something happening. Mm. You know, it's that kind of a tokenism mm. which was given to mm. us. The new ADC bills mm. want to really run the show, mm. the, run these twenty-five departments. You know, right. and that is where like now the non-tribals have issues. Mm. The chief ministers outrightly, outrightly said he's not going to table it. There was a viral video yeah. where he even used, you know, gestures like says, not over my, not over my dead body, body, okay. Mm -hmm. Which, which was brutal mm -hmm. and which was derogatory and mm -hmm. which was extremely insensitive to the population as a chief minister of the state, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we have had tribal chief ministers twice, yeah. but if a, if a tribal chief minister had said that in that position, you know, mm -hmm. there would have been outrage everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, so. You know, uh, the, uh, this thing, a chief minister saying that on record was mm. just too much, okay? Yeah. It also shows like how, you know, like they will continue to uh, deny our ju justice to the tribals, you know? But, uh, but having said that, having everything, I think you know, if you look at the recent Otsums, uh, this thing, uh, appeal, mm. they have appealed to the, all, to the all right thinking citizens, I think, to say that like, leave aside everything, everything else is appeasement. Well, uh, let all the candidates also commit to the ADC bill. Mm. Let them uh, this thing clarify their position on ADC bill. Mm. Let them be explicit about their position on ADC bill. Mm. And whoever is for the ADC bill across political parties, mm. we are all for that. So, so they have said that. The, so they have clearly said that the, the tribals should vote for anyone who will take this bill forward. Right. So even if the State government refused to table the ADC bill. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure it's not going to be buried. The tribals who are going to push for this mm. with the new government, whoever comes in place. Yeah. All right. We are running out of both time and yeah. daylight uh, yeah. because mm. we are on Eastern Standard Time, which doesn't officially, unfortunately, exist. Uh, but uh, but that should give us a sense, I think, of how uh, some of the key stories in this election process will play out, Grace, over the next few days and weeks. Uh, and we'll be covering a lot of them in further detail on NewsClick, uh, thanks to uh, Grace's reportage. Uh, 
key issues we're in Manipur University right now key issues that we'll also be looking at over the course of the next week will be what young people are looking at whether it's employment education healthcare uh, issues uh, such as the Armed Forces Special Powers Act which is very much uh, uh, both a debate as well as a reality that uh, the people of Manipur live with, whether in the valley or in the hill areas. And one that uh, the BJP as the ruling party, uh, the incumbent ruling party, has neglected to even mention in its manifesto. So, so lots to be explored uh, in the state and we'll be bringing you all of that in the next few days. Uh, that's it for now.